Hey Panthers, this is your topic one grammar guided lesson on determining word meanings. So diving right in, it says, think about the lyrics to your favorite song. What pictures or images do they bring to mind? How do the words make you feel? Writers use words in different ways, depending on their purpose. They might use words with a figurative meaning that is different from their literal or usual meaning. They might use words with a technical meaning when writing about a specific subject area, like music. Sometimes, writers choose words with a positive or negative connotative meaning to show how they feel about a topic. You can figure out an author's intended meaning by thinking about the word's context or the text that comes before and after it. So we've been working a lot with words and context in our vocab, um, our weekly vocab that we did in class. So this is going to be a quick lesson about using words that are surrounding a word that you don't know what it means to figure out what it means. So in this case, we're going to use this comic strip, and it says, look at the picture below and read how the boy and girl describe the music. Circle words and clues in the picture that tell you how each person feels about the music. So it looks like there's a band, and here's a guy right here, and he says, this music is intense. So I'm going to use my circle. Or my and I'm going to circle this word intense because that's showing me how he thinks that the music, that's how it makes him feel. So another thing that I'm noticing with him is that he's dancing. So he seems pretty happy about the fact that the band is playing behind him. So we're going to circle him dancing. And then let's go ahead and look at this other um, text bubble. And she says, this music is ear splitting. So let's circle that word ear splitting. And we're gonna, that's how she feels about the music. It's ear splitting. And then when I look at her body language, I notice that she's not dancing. She's covering her ears. And it says, the words intense and ear splitting are both ways of saying that something is loud. But intense suggests positive feelings, while ear splitting suggests negative ones. And we can see that when we're looking at the picture, the intense, he's happy, he's dancing. Um, and the ear splitting, she looks miserable and she's covering her ears. So although the, the, both words, ear splitting and intense, have similar meanings. The words have different connotations. And remembering connotation is showing how they feel about the topic. So it says, look again at how the girl describes the music. Are her ears literally splitting? No. Her ears are literally going to split in half because the music is loud. But what does she really mean? She just means that the music is too loud for her. And it says, why do you think that she uses that word? I think that the reason why she's using the word ear splitting was to show that the loud music was bothering her. Not making her feel happy or joyful about it. And uh, says the word ear splitting is a figurative expression. It's an exaggeration used to describe something unpleasantly loud. Knowing the literal meaning of a word or phrase is not always enough. 
It's also a good idea to pay attention to the context in which that word or phrase appears. Context will help you figure out if the author is using a word for its technical, connotative, or figurative meaning. So that means her ears aren't actually splitting in half. So when the literal meaning, if you knew that ear, you know that ears are a part of your body and you know that splitting would be cutting in half of some sort, that's the literal meaning of the word ear splitting. But that's not the way that it's being used in this picture right here. So just knowing that ear splitting means what that word means isn't enough. So as we get older, we got to use things like body language and words in context to be figuring out that that ear splitting means that it's just too loud. Going on to the next page. This says, read the first two paragraphs of an account about the famous musician Chuck Berry, the father of rock and roll, written by Letitia Hammond. Rock musicians can trace their roots back to one individual, Chuck Berry. He rose to stardom in the 1950s with music featuring driving beats and catchy guitar riffs, short series of notes that repeat throughout a song. Barry's groundbreaking sound combined rhythm and blues with country music. As a guitarist, he was known for his phrasing. Aerosmith guitarist Joe Perry describes the way Barry grouped notes into quick bursts as that double note stop, where you get the two notes bending against each other and they make that rock and roll sound. Barry's clever lyrics about high school and dancing also won over teenage audiences. The words to his songs told the stories of their generation. Everything I wrote about wasn't about me, but about the people listening, Barry said. So it says, explore how to answer this question. What does the author mean? when she says that Chuck Berry was known for his phrasing. The sentence says that as a guitarist, Berry was known for his phrasing. The usual meaning of phrasing is putting a group of words together. What does this term mean in music? And then right here in bold, it says the author is using a word's technical meaning here. In order to understand that meaning, look for clues in the sentences that come before and after it. Fill in the context chart. So we got to make sure that we can see both. So wondering what the term phrase, we're trying to figure out what the term phrasing means here. I'm going to go ahead and underline that word phrasing. It's right here. So we're trying to figure out what phrasing is. It told us that the usual meaning is putting a group of words together. Um, so we're going to look at clues in the sentences that come before and after the term to help figure out its meaning. So we're going to reread and looking for context clues to add into our chart down here. Um, so let's look back. It says, Barry's groundbreaking sound combined rhythm and blues with country music. As a guitarist, he was known for his phrasing. Aerosmith guitarist Joe Perry described the way Barry grouped notes into quick bursts as that double note stop when you get the two notes bending against each other and they make that rock and roll sound. So let's take some underlines and let's think about this word phrasing and what comes around it. I know that the word phrase is putting a group of words together. So this right here really stuck out to me. Grouped notes into quick bursts. That stuck out to me as something that's going to help me figure out what this mean, what this word means. Another thing that might be helpful is that double note stop, where you get this quote right here from Joe Perry. 
that double note stop where you get two the two notes bending against each other and they make that rock and roll sound. So by using the words around it and understanding that the literal meaning of the word phrasing, we're going to try to figure out what this word phrasing means when it has to do with a guitar. So to fill in our context clues down here, I'm going to use a quote because I'm taking a direct line from the passage. And the first line I'm going to, is the first thing I underlined was grouped notes into quick bursts. That's going to be one of my first context clues. And then my second context clue is going to be, this is a double quote, oh, no, um, that double note stop where you get the two notes bending against each other. So those are our two context clues that we came up with. And then I can, I, so I know that this is how he's playing music. So for the response down here, it says on the lines below, state the technical meaning of the word phrasing. Then explain how the context clues helped us figure it out. So I think that the word phrasing is showing how he grouped the notes together. Um, because when I'm, my context clues, both talked about grouping notes, and I know that the literal word of the mean phrasing is putting a group of words together. So I'm going to write the context clues, oops, not clues, show that Barry grouped notes together. This context helps me understand that phrasing means grouping notes together, I could spell into a single unit. Checking my spelling. So we may not have known that that word phrasing meant, but just by using the words around it, we came up with a pretty good definition. So let's go on to the next page. So it says, continue reading about Chuck Berry and use the close reading and the hint to help you answer the question. Berry also revolutionized guitar showmanship with his signature duck walk. It involved playing guitar while squatting and moving forward. One leg would swing back and forth in the air while he hopped on the other. Chuck Berry has shined a light on many rock stars' paths. Even the Beatles' John Lennon credited Barry's sound and style. He said, if you try to give rock and roll another name, you might call it Chuck Berry. So over here, the close reading says, the author says Barry shined a light on many rock stars' paths. How can the context help you understand that this is a figurative bit expression. So it's not meant to be taken literally, this shining a light. They're not actually taking like a flashlight or a any sort of iPhone light. They're not shining a light on somebody. Um, so it's a figurative expression. And if we kind of if the hint down here says substitute each choice for the phrase, 
in the text to see which meaning makes sense. So we're going to go down. I'm sorry. I'm a little. Ooh. <laughs> Let's go down to the, the multiple choice question. And it says, based on the text, which of the following is closest to the figurative meaning of the phrase, shine a light on many rock stars' paths? So remember, the literal meaning of shining a light on something is to physically take a light of some sort, turn it on, and shine it on to somebody. So we know that there's this is not the literal definition. Our author is not using the literal definition. We got to figure out what does it actually mean? Did shining a light on many rock stars' paths mean A, made it possible for musicians to play rock and roll for a living? B, drew attention to the talents of other rock musicians, making them famous? C, helped musicians learn their craft by studying his songwriting and performing? Or D, expose the secrets of rock musicians in the music business. So using kind of what my context clues were up here. So they, they said, has shined a light on many rock stars past. And then they're talking about other famous artists that have credited Barry to helping them learn. So I'm going to use that in my context clues to say that the correct answer is C. It helps the musicians learn their craft by studying what he did. And then down here for the show you're thinking, it says look at the answer that you chose above. Explain how the context in the paragraph helped you understand the meaning of shined a light on many rock stars past. So the context were based, it was basically telling us that many other musicians were influenced by what Chuck Berry did. Um, and it helps me understand that the shining light on other rock stars' paths means that he inspired a lot of people. So let's write that down. The context shows that many musicians were influenced by Chuck Berry. This helps me understand that shine a light on means that Barry inspired many musicians, if you can see that. And then moving on to our next page. Well, the next one says, with the partner discuss other words from both parts of the account that have figurative, technical, or connotative meanings. If you wanted to have a conversation with mom, dad, or brother, or sister, that'd be a great idea. Um, we can move on to our guided practice. Um, read the text. Use a study buddy in the close reading to guide your reading. So this is called The Evolution of the Guitar, written by Pat Fussell. And it says, guitars are dynamic, evolving instruments. Today, guitars are flat-bodied wonders with fretted necks and six strings. Frets are metal pieces cut into their neck at specific intervals. By pressing the string down into a fret, guitarists change the string's length. This changes its tone when it vibrates. The guitar has a rich history that dates back to ancient times, but the first instruments that modern audiences would recognize as guitars developed in the 15th century. They arrived in Spain from northern Africa. Initially, some had only four strings and were much smaller than guitars today. Guitars were all acoustic, that is, their melodic sound was made from string vibrations in their hollow bodies. <coughs> Excuse me. People use them to accompany songs and poetry. Acoustic guitars delight the ears, but are not very loud. By the 20th century, they were often drowned out by trumpets, pianos, and even singers. Few could actually hear them. This changed in the 1920s when Lloyd Lore designed the first magnetic pickup, 
which could capture the acoustic guitar's string vibrations and amplify them electronically through speakers. A guitar could now hold its own with louder instruments. This was the birth of the electric guitar. Now guitarists can either amplify their acoustic hollow body guitars with pickups or play solid body electric guitars. The ways guitars sound and even how they are built continue to develop in fascinating ways. So if I would look over here and I'm using my study buddy, it says authors use words with connotative meaning to show how they feel about a topic. As I read, I'll look for words that suggest the author's feelings about guitars. Oops. And then it says, what do the context suggest about the meaning of the phrase drowned out as it is used in paragraph three? So paragraph three, where it says drowned out by the 20th, 20th century, they were often drowned out by trumpets, pianos, and even singers. The sentence before that tells me that they were a delight to the ears, but they're not very loud. And then it says they're drowned out. So I can use my context clues. It says few could actually hear them to determine that drowned out means um, it was too loud or the sound was lost. And it says, what does a magnetic pickup do to the sound of a guitar? Circle senses that help explain this technical turn. So magnetic pickup. Right here, the first magnetic pickup, which could capture acoustic guitars, string vibrations, and amplify them electronically through speakers. That's what the magnetic pickup does. It says a guitar can now hold its own with louder instruments. This was the birth of the electric guitar. So I know that the magnetic pickup is going to be a amplifier that makes the guitar string vibrations get picked up and louder. Let's go on to our questions. Number one, mind you, you can always use your hints on this page to help you answer. Number one says, which word from the account have, which words have positive connotations? A, fretted, B, evolving, Oh, I'm sorry. A, fretted, acoustic, vibrations, or amplify. B, evolving, specific, modern, and solid. C, wonders, rich, delight, and fascinating. And D, ancient, smaller, hollow, and louder. So just by reading off this, and over here the hint says, which choice contains words that show the author's personal feelings about guitars? Um, positive means good or happy, so C most certainly gave me some positive connotation. Number two, what does the author mean when he writes that guitars were often drowned out by singers and other instruments? Well, we already went back, or we've already underlined kind of context clues around that. Um, so let's see. A, there was a chance that guitars would be replaced by other instruments. B, the moisture in a hollow body guitar kept it from being loud enough. C, it was difficult to hear acoustic guitars over other instruments and voices. Or D, other instruments were becoming more popular than the acoustic guitar. Um, so let's go back up to the text just to make sure before we mark an answer. And where it says right here in paragraph 3. Acoustic guitars delight the ears, but are not very loud. By the 20th century, they were often drowned out by trumpets, pianos, and even singers. Few could actually hear them. So go back. And I think that our best choice for our answer is C, that it was difficult to hear them over other instruments and voices. And our number three says, describe the technical meaning of the word amplify. 
um, include two context clues from the account that help you provide its definition. So let's look back into our text first. And I'm trying to find something that helps me understand what the word amplify means. So let me first find the word amplify. Um, it's right here. I'm going to actually use a square. Here's amplify. Let's give it a red box. And that's what I'm trying to figure out, what the context clues around that word, what does it mean? So around this word amplify, I can see things like holding its own with louder instruments um, and things like speakers and, and vibrations really makes me think that amplify means to make louder. So I'm going to go back to my text and I'm going to write the context clues. lead me to believe that amplify means to make louder or increase a sound's volume. And on reminder that it says, to come up with two context clues from the account that helps us figure that out. So the context clues that helped me figure out the definition were capture the acoustic guitars String vibrations and using the words like speakers, remember? And then the most important one was holding its own, hold its own with louder instruments. Sorry, I'm trying to read off my book here and type at the same time. Hold its own with louder instruments. So those context clues help me figure it out. So we'll leave it there. For the remainder of the assignment, so starting here from the power of music, with this part five common core practice, this is the independent practice that I want you to complete by yourself and submit to me. So you need to read the power of music. Then you need to answer the questions, the four questions that follow. You can submit this to me um, multiple ways. You may do this in your book and take a picture of it and email. Just, all I need are the answers to the four questions. Um, you may take a picture of it on Snapchat and I'm sorry, five questions. You may take a picture and Snapchat it to me or I'm going to upload this along with the video to Google Classroom. I'm leaving this to where you can move these and you can just answer the question and then submit this um, on Google Classroom. So on that note, have a great time if you need to go back and if you get stuck, go back and rewatch the video, making sure that you're going back to your text to find your answers. Have a great rest of your week, Panthers.